Okay, so we're going to talk about the Christian right. And does scripture mention them? And does the Father have a message to the Christians in this country today? And he actually lays the blame of everything that's going on in this nation at their feet. And we're going to see this. First, we're going to cover a little bit about what's going on in our country. And you're going to see how the Christian right is talked about in scripture. And, and the father says that they are responsible for what's going on in this country. So let's go ahead and get started here. Let's start here. Micah, everybody's been in Micah lately, haven't they? <laughs> so it, it, it says, first of all, woe well unto them that despise, devise iniquity. That's what just happened with this bill that they pushed through, the spending bill that they pushed through, where they are hiring, what is it, 87,000 IRS agents. And it says, and they practice it because it is the power in their hands. So they have the power. This is talking specifically about people that have authority. Do y'all see this? Woe unto them because of what they just did. And, and, you know, this can be used many other places, but this is how it's applied to our time right now. And it says, and they covet your fields. They want your money. That's why they hired 87,000 IRS agents because they want your money, they want your possessions, they want your homes. That's what they want. And they're willing to take it by, by violence. And you're going to see that. And they oppress men and in his house and even the man and his heritage. That's his savings, this 401k. They're after all of it. So please don't think that's not happening. And this is what Terry sent me this week. These are the duties of a person who has been hired, these 87,000. Terry sent it to me. Look down here where it says, carry a firearm and be willing to use deadly force. And then the next one, be willing to hey, be Linda? able to. Uh-huh. Yes. Since then, they have deleted the deadly force, but uh, somebody had copied both of the, the um, job links. And since then, they've deleted the deadly force thing. <laughs> well, yeah, they're going to still do it, though. That's their intent. Be willing yeah. to be able to participate in arrest, execute search warrants, and other dangerous assignments. These people have no use for Jacob. They have no use for Jacob, and that's what Scripture tells you. But Micah 2, verse 3, Therefore, thus said the Lord, Behold, against this family... That is Esau, do I devise an evil? Okay, so they're not going to get away with it. They will get away with it as long as the father allows it, which is in this last seven-year period, which I believe we're in. And it says, neither shall you go haughty, for this time is, is a time of evil. You know, so I, you're going to see some of these verses that we're going to go through here that are just amazing, that are going to jump off the table at you. They're just amazing. Micah 2 verse 4, in that day, take one up a parable against you and laminate and say, we are utterly spoiled. That's what eventually is going to happen. It's not just this group, because I really think it's the war that does the spoiling, but we're going to be spoiled by this government too. And change the portion, that's your money, of my people. For how has the, it been removed from me? Turn away, for he has divided your fields. This, this is specifically talking about socialism. They're going to divide everything up. This is where they're headed. They're, they're headed to a, a socialist government, and that, there's no doubt. And it says, don't even prophesy to them, because they're just an evil lot. Verse 8. Even of late, that means at the end time, even of late, y'all see that word, my people is risen up as an enemy. They pull off their robes with their garments from them, and they pass by securely as men averse from war. Okay, so in other words, what he's saying here is the people are hot as a pepper. They're upset over this, and they're taking off their 
coat to fight. <laughs> you know how when people go to fight, they take their coat off? That's what he's saying. And it, it says, and the women of my people have cast off from their pleasant houses. They're going to lose their homes. And, and their children have been taken away. And, you know, if you're not going to follow the guidelines, and this is already happening now that these people have set in place, they're going to take your kids. Believe me, if your child goes to school and they say, I'm a, I am transgender, and that parent doesn't support that, I can tell you it's going to be difficult for that parent because this is the, this is the agenda. This is where they're headed. And these, these scriptures are absolutely on track for everything that's going on right now. Now, now look at this, Micah 3 verse 1. And I pray you, O head of Jacob, heads of Jacob, that's your leaders. That's the people that are in charge. That is Biden and his administration. Do y'all see that? And you princes of the house of Israel, that again is your Congress, along with, with the other people that are serving the government. Is not this for you to be judged, to have judgment? Aren't you going to be judged? Don't you think you're going to be judged? And that's what he's saying. Going on. Who hate the good and love the evil. Y'all have heard that verse over and over again. And then we're going to go to this verse. And it says, who also eat the flesh of the people, flay their skin off and break their bones and chop them into pieces for, as for a pot, as for the flesh in a quadrant. Our government is the quadrant. And then that goes on. And of course, they, they're willing to sacrifice everybody to get what they want. And I'm telling you, I, I, I think that's the most interesting thing that I saw this week. And they pointed it out on Clay and Buck is that when the president went to Carolinas for vacation, he took his son Hunter with him and brought, so that meant Hunter had to fly from California to where the president was so he could board that jet with the president. They're rubbing it in our face. This man has committed many crimes. I'm talking about Hunter Biden. And and then for them to put him on the plane with his father as a photo op, they're rubbing it in our face. And so, in other words, we're going to do what we want, and you people can like it or lump it. And that's where everything is. And it goes on and says, it is not near, let us build houses. That's what the people say. The end is not near. Let's go ahead and do everything that we normally do, because, I mean, the end is not near. But your city is a cauldron. And so it's a melting, it's a pot where they have actually sacrificed the people and put them in the pot. And that's exactly what we see. And it's going to come full circle here. All right, going on. And this is the verse I wanted to get to. This is probably the most critical verse right here. Thus said the Lord concerning the prophets that make my people err. The people are or have gone the wrong way because of their teachers. Their teachers have caused them to err. They bite their teeth. They cry peace. He that puts it not in their mouths. So he's not putting any truth in them so that they can speak it. And, and even prepare war against him. So this is saying here that your prophets and your teachers, because just a prophet is just a teacher, really, truly. You know, they have caused my people to go wrong. This is the Christian right we're talking about here. If these people had gone out and voted in some of these elections, we wouldn't have some of the evil that's going on in this country. But they they chose not to do it. They chose and turned the other way, chose not to do it because their pastors have told them, oh, you, you don't want to get involved in the world. Oh, oh no, that's you don't want to get involved in the world. Well, let's see what the scripture has to say about that. All right, Ezekiel 34, verse 3. You eat the flesh, you clothe them with wool, and you kill them that are fed, but you feed not the flock. They're not getting the truth. Now it says they the deceased have not been straightened, neither have you healed those which are sick, neither have you bound up those which are broken. 
neither have you. In other words, you're not taking care of your flock. And I, I think about this because I came from worldwide because many of them were oppressive and they couldn't have cared less about helping the people. They just were interested in their rules and their authority and their power. And that's also true in other churches. And then this is what he says, but with force and with cruelty, have you ruled them? And I, I think about worldwide every time I read that, because many of the pastors that I had to deal with rule by force. And so verse five, and they've scattered because there's no shepherd. Now look at this. They become meat for all the beasts of the field when they were scattered. All right. So the reason the beasts of the field are the evil people in your land. So it's telling you because you haven't done your job. Now we have to deal with the beast of the field. This goes directly back. One of the reasons is they didn't tell the people to go vote against evil. You know, you got to stand up against evil. You have to stand up against evil. Uh, scripture is very plain about that. Look at Psalms 94 verse 16. Who will rise up against the wicked? Who will stand for me against those who will practice iniquity? Now, I, I know what a lot of teachers teach. And, and they say, well, th there's no point. I mean, this country's coming down. Prophecy says it's coming down. And so there, there's really no point in you, in you trying to do anything to prevent this. Well, that's the attitude that got us this, this got us in this place to start with. That, that's how we got where we are is by having that attitude. And the whole Christian movement has taken on that stance. Well, it's going to come, so the end is coming, so we're going to be raptured out, or, you know, we're going to a place of safety, or whatever it is. But what he's saying here is that we should be standing up against him. Now, you know, you have to go to the Father and, and see how he wants you to do that, because it's, it, there's nothing wrong, absolutely nothing wrong. See, our people now they, they've adopted some of these notions that are being pushed down on them because it's all in the media. It's all in the entertainment. Everything you see is, is being pushed down, is, is, is being adopted. So going on, Ezekiel 3, verse 18, 19. If I say to the wicked, you shall surely die, and you give him no warning, nor speak to warn the wicked from their wicked ways in order to save his life that I, that wicked person shall die for, for his iniquity, but his blood will I require at your hand because you could have said something to him. And that's what's going to happen. You know, the father promises to protect his people and he will do it. But many of these people are not going to go do this. And they'll put out all the conspiracy nonsense, but they won't go and do, you know, go help their brother in a time of need. You, it's not that you need to be pumping in the truth to them. That's the father's job. But you can be, you can be helping them in some form or fashion or some way. And so when you extend brotherly love to other people, you know, that goes a long way with with people recognizing who you are and what you don't even have to teach them anything then because they see that you're practicing the stuff that you that you believe so going on here you know and then you have you're going to have an opportunity to tell some of them it's going to come up that people are going to be real worried soon about what's going on when they see their see some of the stuff that's going to come down because this country, I know that people can't believe it. They think it's just going to stay the way it is. But I promise you, I promise you, if the Father is moving toward the end time, all these things that we're talking about have to come into play because his words do not lie. Now, I'm going to go through something that I found that I think is so interesting. And it's in Luke 19, verse 12. And I'm going to apply it to what we see right now. So it goes on. A certain nobleman went into a far country. Now, anytime they talk about a far country, that's a far country away from the Middle East because that's where they were writing from. Do y'all understand that? The far country, in this case, that 
would be our country, which would be America, or you can plug in any uh, of the Western countries into this scenario here, but we'll plug in America here to receive for himself a kingdom. Yes, they set up a kingdom here and to return. Okay, so, all right, so this is verse 13, and he called his 10 servants. Now, 10 servants are the 10 tribes of Israel. We know that because when you read Genesis 49, two of the 12 tribes are scattered among the other 10. So you have 10, that's referring straight to Israel here, and deliver them 10 pounds and said unto them, occupy, stay busy until I come. And that's, stay busy means doing good works. That's what that means. Occupy, stay busy, work. That actual word roots down to the word work. And the citizens of the United States hated him. Now, who is him? I mean, we all read this the first time and, and thought it was the Messiah, and it definitely is. It is the Messiah. They hated him at that time. But if you apply it to today, the citizens of the United States hated him. That is Trump. And sent a message after him saying, we will not have this man to reign over us. Have we not seen this? We will not have this man reign over us. That is what, that's the whole purpose of everything that's been going on with Trump and all the persecution that they do not want this man to be reelected. And so that's why they raided his home. That's why they've done all of these things. And, you know, it was an illegal search. They went into his home, wouldn't allow anybody in there, and asked them to turn all the cameras off. It's just as easy for them to be able to plant something in there as it's not above these people to do that. And so this is the whole purpose. How significant that we read this at this time and see this thing. And going on, Micah 2, for I will surely assemble, O Jacob, all of them, and I will surely gather the remnant of, it, of Israel, and I will pull them together as the sheep of Basra and as the flocks in the midst of the fold. They're all coming together now. And they made a great, and it says, they shall make a great noise of reason among the multitude of men. There was been an uprising this week with the people because they saw the illegal search and they got away with it. So then once they get away with something, then the next thing they do is even more severe because with each time they're able to get away with something, this is what happens. And so they made a great multiple. To, that's exactly what they did. People rose up this week and said, you know, we won't have this, but it, they have no control right now because everything's being controlled by what we call the evil people in this land, which the father calls the beast of the field because of the way they act. So James 4, verse 17, therefore to him that knows to do good and does it not to him, it is sin. We better be doing a work. I, I, you know, whether it's one that you're online trying to teach people or if you're doing good works for other people, because like I said, Doing good works for other people, you know, is greater than anything you can tell them. I mean, it, it, that's just a fact. And so um, that's basically what I wanted to cover on, th on this piece. For more information about this broadcast, please visit our website at www.12tribehistory.com. That is the number 12, tribehistory.com, or email us at lwatson44 at cox.net with any questions or comments.